I'm here at the fish pond in Kaneohe with Kevin Henry, who is the communications manager with the Red Cross of Hawaii. What a responsibility you have. You know, we hear about the Red Cross nationally and how they step in in the most dire situations. Um, in Hawaii, it's a little misleading sometimes because our weather is so beautiful, but there's a lot of work here for you. Yes, there is. And I'm glad you mentioned about um, the, the national scope of the Red Cross because we just recently, uh, for Hurricane Dorian, had 17 of our volunteers from Hawaii go to be part of the cleanup and uh, assisting people who were victimized or affected by that hurricane. So the arms of the Red Cross are very, very long and expansive. And connecting with other parts of the world sometimes. Well, right. And, and right here in Hawaii, um, the Red Cross is also a place where a community can connect as well because we have volunteers. In fact, 95% of our workforce at the Red Cross is composed of volunteers. So without the volunteers, there, there'd basically be no gas in the tank, so to speak. Speaking about volunteers and community, when the Red Cross steps in in emergencies, you're very present. In non-emergencies, sometimes we disregard the possibility. What might you say in terms of preparedness from that angle? Well, the thing about being prepared is that it's, it's really more of a lifestyle and it's more of a mindset because I think it's very easy to get lulled into this sense of complacency, especially in a place like Hawaii where the weather, you know, you've got the warm breezes and it's, it's not like living in the Midwest or the East Coast or even Florida where you're expecting disasters to happen on a regular basis. Extreme weather. Exactly. So we can just kind of get lulled into, you know, uh, the, like I said, the sense of complacency. So going out and getting a, an emergency kit is so important. You know, it doesn't take long to do. There's certain things that you, you want to have on hand, you know, water, you want to have a plastic wrap for your documents and you want to put your documents on a thumb drive and things like that. Because when disaster is approaching, a lot of times you don't get much of a warning. And that's when everybody freaks out and they run down to the store. And then you see, you always see that newscast photo or, or video of empty bare shelves, uh, shelves right? <laughs> because everybody at the last minute went, went and did it when they could have actually been prepared months in advance. What suggestion would you have or how might you, you frame this so that we're, we're operating from how to take care of ourselves now already as opposed to the fear that gets uh, conveyed by the news when something actually happens? Right. Well, I think that if you can think about the fact that if you invest an hour or two in going to the store and getting the things that you need, you can alleviate a lot of stress, a lot of worry about, you know, how, how are we going to have water? How, where are we going to stay? Uh, the, the other thing is, is that because of our isolation, being out here in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, it's really important to be prepared because it's not like you can get in your car and drive to the next state, mm -hmm. nor can you have people come in or companies come in with goods in trucks, which is what happens very often on the mainland. So having a 14 day supply is, is so important. And also having a sense of community and getting to know your neighbors, getting to know what are some of the challenges they might have, because if there's a disaster, you know, you're worried about your own family, but suppose somebody across the street is elderly or disabled or something like that. They're really going to be in a bad place if they're not able to get that support that you as a community member could offer. And, and that's a really good point about getting to know our communities, because so many of the neighborhoods are not really communities. They are regions or areas. A thought on how we might develop that. Well, one thing I, I was thinking is like having a get prepared party. I mean, <laughs> you, you hear about block parties, you hear about get togethers, you, you even hear about meetups. Right. You know, why not get to know your neighbors and all go down to the, the local Walmart or something and get supplies together? And and it's something that is a win-win because you're getting prepared, you're getting your neighbor uh, prepared and your community prepared, but you're also getting to know your neighbors as well. So you're building maybe a stronger community. And if you feel like you, you live in a strong, cohesive community, I think that adds to the security that you have just on an individual basis. Most definitely. Well, thank you for your thoughts. And I'm going to see how we can frame that as a pre-disaster meetup. Well, they have, they have like 200 meetups in Oahu, so why not have a pre-disaster meetup? I love and, it. You know, and I'll go down to the store and get some supplies before you, Thank before you. you have to freak out and go. Thank get you for them. alleviating the, the anxiety that we might have and for taking the time to be with I us. Try. Thank you. <laughs> 
I've just had a conversation with Kevin Henry, who's the communications manager with the Red Cross of Hawaii. Appreciate you being with us.